Today we talk about good berries. There can't be anything weird about good berries now, can there? Good berry is a spell that can really ruin a survival D&D. If you want to watch a really good video about this, go watch episode 9 of the animated spellbook. I will link that below. Now, the solution that most people come up with is to make good berries a spell that consumes the components. That way, people just can't keep on casting it willy-nilly for the entire campaign. My personal solution to the good berry problem is to fix the mechanics and the lore of the spell. The dark origins of the Goodberry are rooted in a time long ago when the warlord Bel Rook realized that the weakness of his enemies was not in the iron armor of their warriors, but rather in their unprotected farmlands. His forces raised the farmlands, and his warlocks used a dark necromantic energy to destroy the very vegetation of the nearby forests. Thousands were dying of this famine, and the local druids were desperate to come up with a solution that would rebalance their world. One druid whose former life was that of a wizard looked past the normal druidic magics to find a solution. In his youth, he had learned how to pierce the boundaries between planes. If this plane didn't have any food, then perhaps another plane could provide. The results of his experiments were shockingly fruitful. He found an entire demiplane, seemingly filled with small oval black eggs. Even though he was somewhat distrustful of this strange bounty, he felt he had no choice and opened a portal to summon a handful of these eggs. To his shock, what came out of this portal was not eggs, but rather ripe, delicious-looking fruit. Closely researching this fruit, he was amazed to find out that not only did it provide enough nutrition for a creature to survive a day, but also had minor healing properties. This truly seemed like a god-sent solution to their problem. Some of the Elder Druids felt that it was very suspicious that these eggs would take the form of berries. Because in nature, berries only have one purpose, and that's to spread vegetation using another creature's appetite. But close testing of the berries showed that they seemed to have no ill effect, and so the Druids distributed them to the starving populace and eventually, they were hailed as saviors of the land. People no longer distrusted the druids. No longer did the hunter ignore them when they asked them not to hunt certain animals into extinction. And the farmers listened to the druids for the correct way to plant crops without disrupting the land. Even the foresters and the woodcutters all started to listen to the druids' wisdom. These berries were good berries, and they were universally loved by the druids and the local populace. All the druids learned how to summon them from this demiplane and started to use them for rations instead of foraging as they branched out to heal the wounds of the forest. Unfortunately, many of these druids suddenly went missing. Only one druid was found. He had gone to a barren wasteland and was investigating a cave for new funguses. When the druid scouts found him, what was in that cave was no longer a druid. In the short term, there was absolutely no ill effects from the berries, but apparently the druids that tried to subsist on them alone suffered dire consequences. The elder druids had no choice. At least, they felt they had no choice but to keep this secret. They could not give up the newfound respect that they had garnered from the local populace. They quickly taught everybody that had learned how to use this spell that good berries were only to be used in the direst of circumstances and only in limited quantities. They felt, for the good of the balance, no one could ever learn the dark secret of the good berry. But time has a way of shaving off the sharp corners of history, and as the decades turned into centuries, the druids that taught the Goodberry spell no longer knew exactly why they were warning their students not to use it on a regular basis. In fact, in the Forgotten Realms today, many druids who learned the spell were never taught that there were any consequences to it. So now some druids wander the natural world subsiding solely on Goodberries, not aware of the horrible consequences that await them. Goodberries are in fact not trueberries at all. 
but rather the egg spawn of a horrible dimensional monster. The healing property of these berries is to ensure that the host can withstand the horrible changes that will take place if the host continues to eat nothing but good berries. Woe be to any druid who rejects natural food in favor of eating just good berries. Horrific mutations, addiction, and eventual transformation. So there you have it, the dark secret of good berries. If you're interested in the full mechanics and the lore of my personal addition to the game, you can find that, as always, down below. If you are interested in anything specific that you want me to cover for either items, mechanics, creatures, monsters, or even setting, please let me know in the comments below.